Hey guys, on this week's video, things are a little out of control because uh, the Dark Void is under quarantine. Um, that's right, we have a little bit of a viral outbreak. Um, we caught this little thing called the Rolling Rock Virus that's going around. It's crazy. And uh, I don't know uh, what we're going to do because I'm trapped in here under quarantine for the next several weeks simply talking about things that have to do with viruses. And on this week's Failure to Launch, we're talking about the movie Virus with Jamie Lee Curtis and find out uh, why it didn't get another sequel or a franchise and why it was indeed very quickly vaccinated. So, back in 1992, Dark Horse Comics put out a pretty cool series called Virus that had a decent success, so they decided to make a film adaptation, and we saw that in 1999. It starts with a Russian space station getting wiped out by a huge space energy surge, then that beams itself down to a research ship. We then bounce to seven days later and a tugboat containing Kiefer's dad, Michael's sister, and Alec's brother. Which one? The least creepy one. Their ship is sinking and quick note, one of my favorite movies is a fun little horror film on a boat called Deep Rising, which came out just a little while before this one and they had a pretty similar subject matter and are constantly compared to one another. I'll talk about that one in a little while because that's an awesome failure to launch with a lot to talk about. And Cliff Curtis here managed to be in both that movie and this one. Anyway, they find the Volkov and board it and decide that they're going to salvage it and pretty soon discover that there's something else on board with them. Not only is there a human survivor, but there's robot contraptions as well because that pulse in the beginning was sentient and animates the electric devices on board and starts to assemble a little robot army. It even uses the dead body of the crew to make cyborgs to attack. Problem is that the machines have determined that humans are a virus, so they plan to kill them all, and removes a human brain by the 1999 equivalent of watching a YouTube tutorial. Our character count dwindles, and Donald gets taken over by yet another alien species, and then there's the giant Goliath robot that's a pretty decent effect. And Nadia sacrifices herself to wound it. Foster and Steve then eject from the ship as it explodes and destroys the life force. They eject themselves by firing themselves out at high speeds, like a rocket, and smack into the ocean, and yet somehow manage to survive that, and they weren't even in a fridge. Which, as you know, guarantees safety. So what happened here? Why didn't this become a franchise? It's pretty clear that they wanted it to be. It was really hyped up, I mean, they created a video game to tie into it, and even released a line of action figures. The film costs $75 million to make, a pretty strong budget for 99 and it's pretty clear that they were hoping for a huge hit. But they put it out in January, which is notoriously a dumping ground for movies that studios don't have a ton of faith in anymore. It's kind of obvious that they weren't too happy with the finished product, and were trying to find a happy middle ground of hyping it up and also making sure it didn't go up against any of the real tentpole films of 99, like The Mummy, Deep Blue Sea, and this little indie film called The Phantom Menace that was one of those Star Wars things, I think. Why weren't they excited to release it? Well, for starters, it's one of the most forgettable films of the era. I know I've seen this movie a few times, and when I rewatched it in order to research this video, I couldn't really remember anything that happened in it. It may as well have been the first time that I've ever seen it. The film's got this reputation over the past 20 years of being pretty terrible, even Jamie Lee Curtis called it one of the worst films that she's been in. And she did Halloween Resurrection. Now the problem is, is that the movie's not actually that bad. Halfway through, you'll find yourself wishing that it was worse, at least then it would stand out. There's nothing here that you haven't seen before, and as I mentioned earlier, nothing that audiences hadn't seen just one year earlier in Deep Rising. Well, the three people that went to go see that one. Its predictability and unoriginality was called out pretty much by every single critic that reviewed it. Roger Ebert even called out the Deep Rising similarity, and he called that one of the worst films of 1998, but said Virus was easily worse than that. All the press didn't help the film's buzz, and it managed only $6 million in its opening weekend, losing out the teen movie Varsity Blues. Overall, the film only brought in $30 million worldwide, representing a pretty large financial loss for Universal, and any sequel plans were immediately squashed. So there you have it, it's just one movie. It's pretty obvious why. Uh, it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, big budget bomb. It didn't make any money. 
it's kind of a shame because it had a great cast. There's a lot of really great people in this movie that just really didn't live up to the potential of uh, what they could have done, mainly because of a really bland script. I, I know there's a lot of nostalgia for this one. I think people looking back on the rose-colored glasses because maybe it was something that they saw when they were younger. Um, I was a full-grown adult when I saw this movie and just did not care for it at the time and still still just don't really think it's that great. I. It, and if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. You can let me know down in the comments below and tell me how great you thought this one was and what kind of sequels that you wanted to see out of it, even if, even if I didn't. But let me know what you thought of this video down below. Um, let me know your thoughts, comments, and different things. Um, we're going to keep on trying to fight this viral infection in here. But, uh, in, you know, in the meantime, in the real world, guys, um, just please take care of yourselves out there. Wash your hands. And even if you don't feel as if you're in danger, um, think about the people that are. Um, I've, we don't want to spread this thing any further to endanger the people that are susceptible to this, um, even if we are not. Um, so that's it. Just, you know, be good to one another and wash your hands. I shouldn't have to say that. No one should have to say wash your hands, but wash your damn hands. Um, check out my patrons. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I will see you next week for another quarantine video.